This is just one piece of a multi-part course. If you're interested in more, check out tunefiles.com. We now want to start the process of drawing out a mesh and linking our hair to that mesh. We'll start with the head 3 fourths view. So I'll come over here to my heads switch, right click, and then choose head 3 fourths. Now we have several bones situated for this head, and that's due to the three head phases. So for head 3 fourths, it might be in our best interest to hide the bones we don't need to look at. That way, it's easier to see what's going on. So while we are on the Chad bone layer, I want to come in and select all the bones that are either yellow or green, because those are the bones we currently do not need. So we'll just come in and grab all of those, come up here to bone, and then choose hide selected bones. So now, Let's come down and make sure we also enable back hair 3 fourths. That way we can see what that's doing. I'm going to come back here and let's create a new vector. I'll click once on heads, come up here and create the new vector. And I can click once and name this one mesh 3 fourths top for the top part of the head and then hit enter. With this mesh, I'm going to grab the add point tool, zoom in just a little bit here. And with the add point tool, I'm going to come in and start adding in an outline of sorts around the hair. So you can see I'm just kind of coming in and loosely putting a mask of sorts around the first major strand. So just like that. And I can also come in on this little strand right here. We're just going to come down and include it within the mesh. And then I can come in and I'm just going to outline all the way down here to the sideburn. And then I'm going to come all the way up and just reconnect the mesh with the starting position. The first thing you'll need to do when creating a mesh once you have it drawn up and you're satisfied is to click once on that mesh layer and then go all the way up to draw triangulate 2d mesh you can see that this now changes the way the mesh looks next let's click on that mesh once again and i want to click on the bind points tool holding command or control, and then hit A to select all your points. Now alt click to select the bone. And if you do this, you might have to select all the points again, just ensuring that that middle head bone and all the points are selected. Now come all the way up here to the top and click on bind points. This will ensure that the entire head or the hair is bound to the head but we want to isolate certain spots and enhance those. So with that tool and that layer still selected, I'm going to hold an alt and click on this top bone and then click and drag. And I want to create a selection going all the way around the bone, just like so, and then bind points. Hold an alt, click on the next bone, come in and bind your points. You're going to do the same here, and this one might be a little bit harder to pull off, but we're just going to come in here like that and bind points. And that top bone should be okay. We shouldn't have to worry about this one right here. Now, if we come over here and play this out, come over here to the Chad bone layer, and if I move these things around, you can see that we have nothing occurring yet. That's because we need to link the mesh with the hair. So going in here to your head three fourths layer, come all the way down and locate your hair. Double click to go inside 
and then go all the way to the top and click on image. And then on the bottom is smart warp layer. Click once and then choose mesh three fourths top from the list and then hit okay. Now, if I come back here and play this, we're gonna get something that looks like this. You can see that the mesh isn't quite working, although we have some movement going on with the hair. The reason for this is because when we originally set this up, we layer bound hair to the head, but now we are point binding the mesh to the hair. So in order to make this work, we need to click on the hair, choose layer binding, and then click off. Now, the last thing we need to do to make sure this works is take our select bone tool, make sure you're on the Chad bone layer. I'm going to click and then hold in shift and then click on these bones, just like that. Come over here to bone constraints, go down to bone dynamics, ramp up the damping to two, reduce the spring force to one and then close. So now I'm going to advance on the timeline to test this out. So let's go to six. I can move like this, come back like this, and then we'll just straighten out like so. So let's see what this looks like. It looks like it might be a little bit too much, especially with that middle strand. And if that's the case, all we have to do is just come over here select those bones. I'm going to increase the damping force to four. We can try this now. Still looking a little bit off and it might be the way the mesh is working as well, but I'm just going to keep working on this. I want a little bit of movement and I think it can work the way it's set up. I just need to find the right formula for the movement. A little bit more here. I'm just going to come in reduce the torque force to like 0.3, the spring force to 0.4, close that. And you can see now that we have a little bit of movement occurring with the hair. It's not much, but I think it works because it's a little bit of movement, but also we have more drastic movement occurring with the long strand. Now, one thing you could point out as an error with this is when the strand's moving, you can see that it's sort of detaching from the side of the head right there. And that's again, the way we had the mesh set up, we could be more diligent with the mesh, but I could also just come in here, go to my bone dynamics, and for that top bone on that large strand, maybe increase the damping to four. And you can see it's starting to work a little bit. It sort of slows down the movement, but we might have to come in here and just play with this a little bit until you get something that works. But as you can see, playing with the dynamic bone settings can really allow you to hone in on the effects that you want. So between videos, I might adjust this value so that top movement is less drastic. And we might play around with the mesh as well. You can go in, add more points in between and do all sorts of different things. And we do have plenty of mesh work coming up in this course. To view the rest of this course or gain access to the source files, visit tunefiles.com.